You know what I hate about games like that? I hate the fact that I can't go sans pants the next day. That is the worst part of it. I can't go cheeks out. I can't go easy breezy feeling freedom that a big time national TV win over a top team in the NBA. I feel bad that I can't celebrate it the way it deserves to be. You know, instead, I sit back here, humbled, double pants, quieted, reflective, eating a little bit of humble pie. It happens. It happens. You take a drubbing every now and then. Sometimes it's actually good for you. You know, resets things, puts things in perspective. You're like, oh, all right. We got some things that we got to take care of. There's, the, there's not this false sense of security that you get yourself lulled into when a bunch of people are out there fraud beating left and right. You know, last week for the Heat, it was put your ass on notice week. That's what it was. You put the Eastern Conference's ass on notice. This one, we, we, we didn't know this going into last night, but what the Heat sneakily walked into and didn't realize, I think, that it was a revenge game for, for the Suns. This is a team. And they have my respect. There's not many teams in this in this league that I, I I worry about the Heat facing. But the Suns, if it were to blessingly come down to an NBA Finals between the Heat and Suns, they're they're a stacked team. I mean, they absolutely have my respect for what they got uh, what they got and what they can bring to the table in a matchup against Miami. But to hear a couple of things that were weird about going into that game last night from the Suns side of it, one that Devin Booker was flying in to take on the Heat for that matchup when, come on, you're you're a gazillion games up in the standings. He's going to fly across. I know we have a great city. Don't get me wrong. I mean, Miami is fantastic, and, you know, I'm sure, uh, I don't know which Jenner he's with. I'm sure she'd enjoy herself, too. But to hear that and then to hear him afterwards talking to Sedano about, Oh, we wanted this one. Monty Williams saying it was an important game for him. You know, DeAndre Ayton being as intense as he was for the start that the Heat got off. He didn't know it, but they were walking into a revenge game. And I think for the Heat, it wasn't quite at that level, especially you could just tell like the way the game started off, pew, 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 quick and going, Duncan Robinson getting going the way that he was going, Kyle Lowry, QB1 in it deep. Um, You thought things were going to go a little bit easy. They'd wilt away. It was a second night of a back-to-back. So easy to go away. But that's why the Suns, you got to give them a lot of credit. They came into that game uh, not with the best start, knowing that they were probably on a a, a little bit of sleep, didn't have that South Beach flu that was hitting them. And you end up uh, getting drubbed in the second half of this game. It was a really, really fun back and forth. I'm sure that as Heat fans are watching it, you were a little bit worried because of how great you were shooting you were down at some points, barely up at some points, and then ended up barely down at halftime. But it, it was all in all uh, just a really, really fun, competitive first half. You had, you know, a sick dunk by Kayla Martin to, to in the in the second half. You had that block party that was going by Martin and Deadman, and you know would just end up with Javale McGee getting a gazillion rebounds and uh, you know ugh, Javale McGee all over the place, or as I like to refer to him, Kurt Angle. Because he's putting the ankle lock on Kyle Lowry. I mean, what 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 the hell was that? You, it, what, is this WWE? Is JaVale McGee just allowed to go out there? What's next? A figure four leg lock? Is he you should put the cripple across face on him? What 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 what's next for JaVale McGee putting on Kyle Lowry? All right? The cheek hold? What possibly could it be? So that team's stacked though, man. I mean, you you think about everything they got from DeAndre. I don't understand how that team didn't uh, extend DeAndre Ayton. That's crazy to me. That guy that guy is good, and uh, and plays with some uh, some real intensity. I did say going into that game on the uh, on the morning show that uh, Bam was going to take his lunch money. That turned out not to be the case. It turned out that uh, DeAndre Ayton was uh, was quite full. You know, it looked like he went to La Carreta. You know, and maybe took some empanadas on the way home. Stopped at Half Moon before he got on the plane to go back to Phoenix. Um, but it was just one of those games where they had everything cooking. I mean, when you see Javale McGee's hitting one-legged fadeaways, what are you supposed to do? You know, it's one of those nights they got everything going. You couldn't get a, you couldn't uh, pee a drop, and so it's a little bit humbling. I mean, like, listen, it's a little. Can I just say? I mean, a little embarrassing that you know that you're going to say, "Oh, well, he, you should be embarrassed." Should we be? I mean, like, look how intense you guys are getting up for a game. 
in the middle of the week where it's like, ah, second out of the back. Look how look how hard you guys are playing. It's a little unbecoming, if if I'm honest. Oh, because why? Because you guys got schooled by Yurts of Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson in your building, and you're holding on to that for months. Part of the petty respects it, but part of it's a little embarrassed for you, to be honest. Um, the things I didn't like about this game, I mean, honestly, um, very very clunky. Obviously, in the in the second half, offensively, that was a bummer. Um, they were doing, I felt like a number on Bam, getting him in uncomfortable spots. I didn't think we saw the guy who was uh, aggressive going downhill. I think that that did, as he said in the in the post game aftermath, that that did put an effect on their defense as well because they just, I think, were so frustrated by not being able to get into their offense. Uh, the other thing that's uh, that's tough, you had, you know, Tyler Hero was getting uh, was getting badgered all night. Campaign did a good job on him. Um, you know, Bridges and, and Aiton on the inside were just absolute monsters. But I think that um, the other thing that stood out, really when you look at the box score at the end, it's like, man, Kyle Lowry only took three three shots. And I'm just like, they're just, I, 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 I get it from QB1. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I, he is here. He is set up. He is a savant. Him and, uh, and Eric Spolstra seem like they're on the same wavelength. If you bring it up to Eric Spolstra, he'd probably – scoff and dismiss it that all oh, you need Kyle Lowry to take more shots you basketball simpleton you you neophyte you dummy look at you you ask me these questions oh oh really box score watcher you wanted to take more shots what else are you gonna do give me his points per game nerd that's the way they would look at me and I understand it I'm a basketball dummy I'm not like one of these you know number savants out there I'm not like a a Cooper Moorhead, a, a, a basketball computer that we got going on there. The guys who do the, I'm not that. You guys know this, all right? I'm Goosey's guts and good looking. That's how I am, you know. I just, I, I that's how I roll, and that's that that's that that's a Gennady Golovkin, dude. That's a Triple G, and for me, I just look at it and I say, look, I do break things down like this. He is one of the highest paid players on the team. He is a decorated all-star he is a champion he is the leader of that offense especially when Jimmy Butler does not play to me as much as I love him setting people up and you're still getting 10 assists on a on a on a, on a dog bleep game you know we got off to an insane start where he got like five assists in four minutes but I just need a little bit more there needs to be some kind of different element it can't all just be hey let's get everybody comfortable at some point, I do need Kyle Lowry to make some people uncomfortable. And the thing is, I've seen him do it this year. You know, he's it has been called upon him. It has been something that they've needed from him. Now, I don't know if this is, you know, he's been away from the team multiple times now since the All-Star, uh, since really the second half of, uh, since basically they got Jimmy and Bam back. Kyle Lowry has been missing a bunch of games for personal reasons. So I don't know if this is a case of maybe he's not, all the way back he's not all the way uh conditioned I don't know I, I don't I'm not, I'm not trying to suggest that he's out of shape but I'm just saying is he not got the the full arsenal or comfort with going to the arsenal I don't know but we have seen games where he's closed really well for this game even uh you think back to that Charlotte game where maybe his toe was on the line whatever um you think to that Phoenix game you think back to the road trips when they was just him yurt the two-way players the g-leaguers the undrafted guys and what he was able to do. Um, Kyle Lowry showed, man. He showed what he's capable of on given nights. And I just felt like when you're getting drubbed like that in the second half and you're drowning, I just feel like it calls upon for something different. I, and I think that it's easy to overreact to these games. Um, although I do think that we have seen now a little bit of a pattern of the Heat having some trouble with some size. You know, this game, the Toronto's, Toronto's more long than you know traditionally big. Same thing with a, a team like Dallas. These teams with tons of wingspan all over the place have been giving the Heat some problems, and the rebounding was atrocious last night. Um, some of it was on some kooky misses, so yeah, it can it can sway some things. And certainly, Phoenix was just making you pay on everything. But I just feel like in a game like that, it calls for something different. I don't know if that's Big Yurt. You know, Big Yurt is uh is got like this magnetic ability to just go get rebounds. Know that he's not a perfect player. He certainly doesn't seem like he's got the system down. Pat completely. I don't think he completely has Eric Spolstra's trust to be in these ultimate moments yet. 
But one of the beauties that I thought this whole run that the Heat went on when they didn't have everybody was that when called upon in certain spots, these guys can come in and provide something. And that, you know, I think was a, was a bit of a, a lost opportunity yesterday. But there were some other big key things, one of them being that you lost Caleb Martin. Caleb Martin, it has to be said, like the guy is – very, very important to this team. He is a big-time role on this team as far as an energy burst off of him. What do they call the man? Red Bull. Listen, as disgusting as it tastes, I went through my own Red Bull phase. It does give you wings. It is uh, unbelievably effective for that initial burst. And dude is collecting posters like he works at a comic book shop. It's unbelievable uh, the story that he's been this year, and you hope that he's going to be okay. I mean, that looked like something gnarly. We know that he's been dealing with the Achilles to lose him, I think, would be uh, not a not a backbreaker, but it certainly would hurt. It would certainly hurt. And and you think about a guy that, through all these people coming back, and Victor Oladipo coming back, Eric Spolstra wasn't going away from Caleb Martin. He was still going to Caleb Martin. You know, it wasn't Caleb Martin who was losing minutes the first game Oladipo came back. It was Gabe Vincent, and it was Max Strews. Second game back for Victor Oladipo, it wasn't. Gabe Vincent started for Jimmy, basically. It wasn't Caleb Martin losing minutes to Victor Oladipo. It was Max Strews. So, clearly, Eric Spolstra values a lot of what he brings to the table. And to not have him uh, for any time would suck. It would not be great for your Miami Heat, for sure. It also hurts because, you know, you get the national shine. I've been not big on this. I admit it. I've been big on the Heat and the national shine, the lack thereof. Maybe my focus was off, you know? I was sitting there. And I'm getting so angry at this damn pregame show that they got going on there, right? And I wasn't boots on the ground last night. I was supposed to be boots on the ground, but my boots had to be parked at Casa Tobin because of uh, a, a scheduling snafu, shall we say. And so I was I was boots on the couch, and I'm watching this pregame. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to watch. Normally, I watch Bally. You know, I used to always be in the ESPN. Then I was like, ah, I'm going to be a Bally guy. Watch the local broadcast. But this one, I've been talking so much about this ESPN. I was going to torture myself, and I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch the broadcast, see what they got. And they start off this broadcast. I, I bleep you not. They start off this broadcast for the number one team in the West and the number one team in the East. And who are they talking about? But the Brooklyn Nets and Kyrie Irving's 50-burger from the night before. And this, for whatever, this just set me off. I'm like, look, I get it. I watched NBA Today that day. No Heat talk. No Victor Oladipo talk. I watched Sports Center Barely. Barely any. You know, mostly just Nets, Sixers, Nets, Sixers, Nets, Sixers, Nets, Sixers. Nets, Sixers blah, 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 blah. But for some show to be called NBA Countdown, that's what it does. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock supposed to count me down to the game I'm watching and for them to start off with a mother bleeping Brooklyn Nets segment for the gazillionth time to then go on to your B block and then promote Nets and Sixers which is on the next night on another network I lost it I'm just like, what, 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 what is it about the Miami Heat that just gets your undies in a bunch, ESPN? I don't get it. And then they go, finally, after taking a commercial break, come back and they're like, they go and they're like, well, we talk a lot of bucks, which they, they honestly don't talk that much bucks, but they say that. Bucks, and we talk a lot of Sixers, and we talk a lot of Nets, but we're finally going to talk about, oh, we're doing it, oh, we're doing like they're threatening me, we're going to talk about the Miami Heat, oh, wow, oh, geez, I thought you, you're like you're threatening me like it's, we're talking about the early 2000s uh, Spurs, you know, what, what a crime, you got to talk about a team with Jimmy Buckets and the Sixth Man of the Year and an All Star in Bam Adebayo and a multi time All Star in Kyle Lowry. What a shame! With a top 15 coach of all time in Eric Spolstra. Sorry to put you through the chore, Bristol. Or whatever the hell that show is being broadcast out of. 
So it'll put me in a bad vibe. I'm not going to lie. I know it's not where my focus should be. You know, should be on my humble pie that I'm eating. I'm eating it. You know, begrudgingly. It's, again, I mean, Phoenix, you know, get over yourself. Oh, we, we wanted this game. All right. You know what? Good for you. You got this game. We got the game there. It's split skis, dude. Even Steven. All right. People ask me, was this a true loss? Was it a to Tobin true loss? Not? Look, in the not true loss, true loss bylaws, I consider it a true loss because you have all-star for all-star out. All right. They don't have Chris Paul. We don't have Jimmy Buckets. Although Jimmy was a more of a surprise. They know that they're not going to have Kyle, uh, Chris Paul. So if it were to tip the scales in one way, it would be more not a true loss for the Miami. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be that guy who says all of a sudden out of nowhere, they don't have Jimmy. Would he have made the difference? I don't know. Maybe. 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 He's one of the best defenders, one of the best uh, artists at getting to the line, one of the uh, the most intense guys in the league, essentially your MVP. Is that important to your team? Maybe some people would say so. But it's fine. I'm not going to do that today. I'm not going to do it. But I will say, J.J. Redick, you're dead to me. Because you had the audacity to bring up Suns culture, okay? Which is basically a sidekick, a, a, a side cart of heat culture. They're run by James Jones, dude, okay? Guy basically has the Riles blueprint in his iPhone. That's what it is. That's just the facts. So to hear all oh, Suns culture, dude, you think the, the owner's getting invested. Don't tell me about Suns culture the hell out of your son's culture stop stealing stuff get your own thing with your with your mascot the flying uh thing that does the what is that a a, a gorilla that does the, the does the jumps and get your own logo too dude it's basically like the heat logo except not as cool it was like really agrees i bet the Heat probably sued you back in like the steve nash days where you guys basically had a, a another flaming ball very annoying whatever see him in the finals That's how it's gonna go, but things to look out for from this one. Look, the Heat got the uh, they got a they got some big games coming up. Cleveland's coming in, Minnesota's coming in. Both teams are good. Next week, you got a couple of uh, breaks. You got a couple of uh, probably couple probably rarely the Heat will practice a couple times next week at home, which they have not been doing much. You got uh, Detroit and OKC. Those two teams stink. TCB games must wins, and then after that, you're going to Philly. Maybe you'll get a chance to see James Harden. Maybe he'll grace them with their presence. And you'll take on the Warriors, who've kind of been reeling lately, but still, always a big-time matchup. See those dumb little kids with their uh, Steph Curry jerseys walking around the arena. I love watching them leave crying, you know. Ooh, Steph lost. Buy your son a mashup jersey, please. Um. And then for me, you know, I, I, what do you take from? I'm not gonna get over. I'm not gonna get crazy about this loss. Get the hell out of here! It's a regular season game. You're still number one in the East. They're the best team. I give them. Uh, I give them credit for this. Hey, spoiler alert: the Suns are really good. They got everything. They got. Uh, they got tremendous talent all over the roster. They were nailing everything. You know, damn Javale McGee was Dirk Nowitzki, and he couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. It was, uh, you know, it was, it was like a, it was like an Easter egg hunt because there were so many bunnies getting missed left and right. So you move on, you move on things. I would have liked to see that would have maybe helped. Definitely want to see Kyle Lowry in those situations. Please look to score a little bit more, dude. I mean, for God's sakes, you got, you got the damn, you got the damn rights. All right. You're, you're pretty established. I know you want to set everybody up. Don't be afraid to put your head down and go get some buckets for the heat. We'd love it. We'd love to see it. And then uh, Omer Yurtsevin, would love to see a little bit more Big Yurt. You know, Dwayne Devin's been a little bit inconsistent lately. You know, does there need to be a little bit more Big Yurt in our life? It may be time. It may be time. Um, and then hopefully Caleb Martin is, uh, Caleb Martin doesn't miss an extended period of time from this. That's certainly another big takeaway. Oh, and Vic, you know, I thought Vic physically looked good. Um, certainly is going up against a much better team. Um, but it was good to hear him afterwards after the game saying that he, uh, he's feeling better physically in this game than it was even in the first game. 
No, I felt really good today. I felt like I was moving better even in the first game. Um, starting to get more and more comfortable with my body and just being out there and playing a game and, you know, the speed of the game. Um, and, you know, like I said, it's going to take time. Um, but you know, I'm going to stay patient and stay persistent as well. That's really great news to hear from Vic. Um, look forward to keep seeing him on the court. It's been really awesome having him back. And I do think that he's right, you know, that he can really provide punch in a lot of levels for this team. You know, I mean, I feel like in my my career, I've I've done a pretty good job of scoring the basketball at all three levels in the paint, mid range, threes. So um, when I get comfortable out there, you know, I, I truly feel like I can contribute in pretty much any way offensively. So uh, you know, if that's what the team needs me to do, that's what I'm gonna do. So go out there and do whatever I can to help the team win. Just gotta keep getting better, uh, picking my spots, um, and. Um, I'll figure it out. I'll wear my double pants today. Sadly, humbly. But I don't like it. I don't like it. You know, you haven't taken a, an ass kicking like that since Boston, where no Jimmy, uh, no Jimmy Butler in that game, no Kyle Lowry in that game. Uh, big turnaround game for Bam since then. Boston has been surging. Um, full strength wise, really haven't taken an ass kick like that probably since the first Boston game this year. So you definitely owe Boston something this year. Uh, also, one of that felt lo- the worst home loss you probably felt since that Dallas game where Dallas really dragged you in the mud and made things uncomfortable. So, you know, they were able to take that turn into something good. Hopefully they'll do the same thing here as they got a nice little uh, fun run coming on up. That's it, man. All right. Turn the page. It's going to be all right.